just like the criteria I used for the worst films of the year so far, when I compiled this list of my favorite films of 2023 so far, I used that same criteria. So there aren't any documentaries because I'm saving the documentaries I'm going to watch for around Oscar time or at least the end of this year. And it would have to be a film that I watched completely all the way through. So at least once. So that's the criteria I use to compile this list of my favorite films, the best films I've seen so far this year. Let's jump right in. So coming in at number 12 is just an endearing film. Are You There God? It's Me Margaret. What an amazing film. Not only is the story charming, it was well acted, it was easy to follow. I wish more people saw this in the theaters, but I think audiences are gravitating to it on digital. Rachel McAdams continues to prove while she is one of the great screen queens of this generation. She is so fantastic in this film. I think it's it's well performed. It's a really great story that is uh, necessary to tell now. Uh, it's very I, I resonated with it. Audi the audience I saw it with really enjoyed it. I thought that this was a film that would be great for summer camps and classmates and family reunion. Like this is just. A great film. So that is my number 12. Are you there God? It's me, Margaret. Coming in at number 11 was released to critics last year, late last year, December 2022. It was made available to critics and to audiences on the coast in New York and LA, but it went wide in January and that's when I saw it. I believe I saw it on the first or second and that is A Man Called Otto. Tom Hanks is so brilliant in this film. Actually, everyone delivers a really great performance. Now, this is such a, this story I think will resonate with so many people and it's catching on, it's on Netflix. It's catching on because although he plays somewhat of a Karen, he is so miserable and so lonely, but his neighbor takes the time to understand him on a deeper level and discovers the true guy that's living deep inside that people haven't seen in such a long time. I resonate with this story. It's a really charming story. I think everyone delivered a perfect performance. I'm surprised Tom wasn't nominated for an Oscar for this film because he is outstanding. It's a really good movie. Coming in at number 10 is Monica. This film is so touching. Now, it's filmed like a portrait. Sometimes when I watched it, I thought, this director is in love with Trace Lissette's beauty because she is gorgeous. But the film finds her in her element in such a beautiful way because she's so beautiful and so photogenic that, you know, it adds, it, it's like another character in the film. I love how it was filmed, but Trace Lissette plays the trans woman who was disowned by her mother, played by Patricia Clarkson, brilliantly played by Patricia Clarkson, but her mother, uh, and they're very estranged, and her mother has dementia and is, pretty much on her deathbed. And Emily Browning plays her sister-in-law. And so Trace has to, uh, her character has to go back home to take care of her mother, or at least, you know, give her final wishes, like on her deathbed and find it in her heart to forgive her mother uh, for not understanding that she was a trans woman. A lot of this film is very quiet and I like the quiet, how the quiet is filmed and what is said in the quietness and this other story and life that Trace's, Trace's character is going through, Monica, 
what she's going through in her love life and how she has this attachment to this person that doesn't want to be with her. It's a really beautiful and touching film, not one that we haven't seen before, but I think the depth and nuance that this story brings is very touching. Coming in at number nine is Air. Air was so fantastic. Now, everybody delivered an air. One of the things I had an issue with in air is that the camera, this was directed by Ben Affleck, his camera lands on these objects and items that just reminds us of the times that it was, you know, it takes place in the 80s. And I thought we didn't need that uh, reminder. But other than that, the performances are so fantastic. It's funny, it's relatable. I mean, Viola Davis, she steals the film. Matt Damon is brilliant. I think if we're lucky, they both will be nominated for Oscars. Hopefully there's room because I think what they deliver in this film that is otherwise a boring, you know, business deal, really. But because of who's involved, the performances uh, from Matt Damon and Viola Davis and Ben Affleck and Jason Bateman and Chris Messina, who is hilarious in this film, and Chris Tucker and Julius Tennant, everyone delivers and they really make this film work. I hope there's room for Viola Davis and Matt Damon come Oscar time. We'll see. Number eight, Asteroid City. Now, I didn't review this film because this is definitely a film I have to see a second time. I had an exchange with someone on Twitter because I was confused by why this car, there's a car chase that just it's not disruptive but it's very loud in between scenes it would just zip by with no regard to it happening and I had an exchange with someone on film Twitter because I was like is he trying he meaning Wes Anderson and e. Roman Coppola co-wrote this with Wes Anderson I was wondering if what they're trying to illustrate there or convey is about sound design because it is a very prominent sound because the car chase just zips by, not in a disruptive way, but, and, and none of the characters in their scenes break and don't recognize it, don't pay attention to the scene, but it is a very prominent sound and it zips by in a way that distracts the viewer but even though it doesn't distract the actors in the scene or the characters in the scene i thought I, I said well that's what i think it is but that seems like a very simplistic way of thinking about it it has to mean something else so i thought i'm gonna see it again but i had an exchange with someone on twitter and he says that he believes it's about stories in general. His idea was that everything is story, but the ones we choose to tell and how we tell them are the most important. I thought this was about sound design, but on a technical level, on a crafts level, this is a beautiful movie. It looks like cardboard cutouts in the most beautiful color and most beautiful design, like that if you were to look through a viewfinder and go through the different dimensions of, you know, real life, stage play, movie, it's very beautiful to look at. Number seven, Bo is Afraid. Wow, this was, I, I didn't see this in the theater because I was like three hours and, you know, Joaquin Phoenix, he, though he's a brilliant actor, I thought it's going to be too quirky to sit through for three hours. Man, I wish I would have saw this. I wish I would have seen this in the theater. I love this film. It looks beautiful. 
Joaquin Phoenix continues to raise the bar. He is such a thespian, such a method actor. I think what he does in this film is beautiful and I love how the story unfolds. It's different and that's very, very important. It's unlike any other film this year and I love it. Coming in at number six is Sanctuary. This film is so brilliant. What I loved about it most are the performances from Margaret Qualley and from Chris Abbott. They were exceptional in this film. They kept elevating the drama and the tension as she who plays a dominatrix and he who is accepting this new position in his family, in his dad's company uh, who just passed away. He is taking on a lot more responsibility, but he believes he's less than and he's not worthy of this. And so he is a glutton for punishment and literally needs her to pull out the best from him. But because it could jeopardize his standing in the company, he wants to distance himself from, from her, but she wants to be paid for making him into the man and corporate savant that he's about to become. This film is so good. The music is brilliant. For a contained thriller, it it just it has this way of holding interest. And what is also intriguing and I think different than other contained thrillers is the fact that it keeps you guessing because you don't know if she is performing because he hired her to he's written a script for her to follow and you really don't know if she's following this script word for word or if she is uh improvising the scenes to pull out of him what uh what he needs to be in order to take on this position and she feels like he owes he owes her and he, he's unappreciative of what she's done to get him to this place. This is a great, Margaret Qualley for a fairly new actress is, first of all, the roles she's taking are really great. Her, her career trajectory is fantastic. She keeps elevating and elevating and elevating her career. She's challenging herself. So Zachary Wiggin, um, his direction, the way he uses the camera to also tell the story and to show how uh, lopsided the relationship is. He uses the camera to illustrate uh, or punctuate that fact. It's a great film. Coming in at number five, Sisu. This caught me by surprise. This is such a great film. The action sequences are great. The tension building and world building, just, it, it was so exhilarating. I think the acting is great. I was on pins and needles watching it. I like that the main actor, Jorma Tamela, had very little to say. I mean, this could have been a silent film and it still would have looked great because the tension was so intensifying and exhilarating. I think a lot of his facial acting just worked for me. This is one to watch out for when it's on streaming. I think it's on digital now. Treat yourself and see this film. This is a fantastic action thriller that will have you on pins and needles. Coming in at number four is Rye Lane. This is one of the most beautiful films I've seen all year. It's so colorful and vibrant. David Johnson and Vivian Opera star in this really quaint, film about these two strangers who meet after you know this devastating breakup and they spend the day together touring this this nook of London and they you know share their stories they debrief each other about their most recent relationship 
and their heartbreak but as much as they are characters so is the world around them the world around them is also a character and adds to the story it really elevated the story of how beautiful it is how vibrant the colors are against their chocolate skin very simplistic story but what adds value to it is how how beautiful the cinematography is and how beautiful the music is and how touching it is when you meet someone uh, a stranger and how you can grow a relationship how that relationship can blossom in the shortest amount of time i think rain allen miller did a brilliant job directing this film and how her camera captures these vibrant colors against these two actors against their beautiful brown skin i think Rylane is so such a one of the most beautiful films of the year for short sure. for me it's up there with asteroid city and with across the spider-verse coming in at three is john wick four this film i mean i am spoiled if the action film isn't bringing john wick four keep it because this really changed the game and shifted what audiences should expect in an action film. Like you can't phone them in anymore. And I think what, like there are some of the best action scenes ever filmed in John Wick 4. The steps, the abandoned building, this is in the ending such a cliffhanger this is a great action film probably my favorite action film of all time and I've seen plenty of action films like I think this tops all action films at least in the last couple of decades for sure I think of all time this John Wick 4 changed the game change the game completely coming in at number two is across the spider-verse now listen this is about to get best animated feature again and make more history this changed the game for animated films it proves what can be done and going forward i'm spoiled listen it has to be this or better this film looks so good i saw it twice in the theater and i was mesmerized each time it looks good the story is easy to follow it's very inclusive and not just inclusive for you know as far as representation is concerned but it is inclusive as far as all of you know spider-man canon this is my favorite animation of all time and one of my my second favorite film all year but my first my absolute favorite film of 2023 so far and i'm pretty sure that it's going to remain on my list for the rest of the year no matter what else is released is past lives i was so touched and blown away by this film. What Celine Song does in the silences in this film is unmatched. The performances are fantastic. I need Greta Lee to be nominated for Best Actress. I need Tao Yu to be nominated for Best Actor. I need John Magaro to be nominated for Best Supporting Actor because their performances are too good to pass up. They're so good in this film. Like, I know that th there are going to be at least four men nominated for Best Director this year for Oscars. Celine Song must be nominated for Best Director. She did such a brilliant job in this film. She cannot be snubbed. She also wrote the best screenplay of the year so far. The best screenplay. It's hers to lose, I think, at this point. 
I highly recommend seeing Past Lives. It's going to touch you in a way that I don't think another movie has this year. It certainly hasn't for me. So my favorite 12 films of 2023 so far are number 12, Are You There God? It's Me, Margaret. Number 11, A Man Called Otto. Number 10, Monica. Number 9, Air. Number 8, Asteroid City. Number 7, Bo is Afraid. Number 6, Sanctuary. Number 5, Sisu. Number 4, Rye Lane. Number 3, John Wick 4. Number 2, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. And number 1, Past Lives.